Let's just recap where we are today. There are various protests going on um, and a big march going on through London, pro-Palestinian march. There's the Cenotaph service, which has taken place uh, pretty well without incident, though people were detained, not necessarily arrested, but detained. And there were scuffles in uh, the end of Whitehall and also in... um, uh, oh, Chinatown. Now, uh, at the same time, Tommy Robinson led led a band of people towards the Cenotaph to support the uh, commemoration of the Armistice Day. Tommy Robinson was wearing a poppy, I noticed. A lot of his followers were not. It's quite interesting. And uh, I, I think when you go out... Uh, round about this time of year, probably the the appropriate thing is to wear a poppy. And uh, I I certainly don't think it's necessary to be parading poppies all over the place. Uh, you know, your good deeds are things that you do quietly. But the uh, the support for the for the um, uh, poppy charity is important to help support veterans to help support those people who have uh, given their lives, who have, um, uh, the families of people who have given their lives for their country and who are commemorated at this time. Uh, Maya Tusi was out on the street with Tommy Robinson for some of that time. I think they lost each other at one point. Um, And what he records is fairly straightforward. Sometimes a bit noisy, but certainly not riotous. Uh, the uh, the footage which is recorded elsewhere, particularly on mainstream media, shows an entirely different view. It may be a different incident, um, but I, I I I would say you know the the spirit which has been dictated by Suella Braverman is confrontational. And it doesn't really matter how uh, how much Tommy Robinson and his friends try to pacify the situation, how much they try to demonstrate their goodwill, and I'm sure that goodwill is there. Uh, they are icons for trouble. And Suella Braverman has determined that. Suella Bra- it is at Suella Braverman's feet that you lay this issue. And I raised the other day the issue which I thought was very interesting that Tommy Robinson has uh, been accused of um, breaking a court ruling about a film. And the film itself is quite interesting, I think, uh, from what I've heard and from what I've been able to find out. Um, but it doesn't look as if it was something that Tommy Robinson himself published published or publicised. Uh, it looks like it was something that somebody got their hands on before the court case, and they have gone ahead and booked a cinema in the States and shown it. But seven months ago! And then Tommy Robinson received a letter saying that he had broken the court ruling the judge's ruling, uh, only a few days ago. And the timing is suspicious because this is the point at which he's found himself liberated on Twitter, probably because Elon Musk came to the country (laughs) um, and uh, has started speaking out on Twitter and making public appearances. Now, I'm I'm, I'm no fan of Tommy Robinson, not at all. Uh, But I am a fan of free speech. And I'm there, I I, I hope, um, with, with, with those people who would say, so free speech is probably, uh, other than guaranteeing food for people, free speech is up there with a roof over our heads. These are the three things on which our civilization is based. Free speech, food, and housing. 
And I think you you have to allow free speech even to people who you don't agree with. Now, I think it is provocative, and it's also in Meyer's broadcast, uh, the, the sounds of um, people walking down the street shouting, Ingerland, Ingerland, and, uh, and other slogans. I, that is provocative. It's probably unnecessary. But in the end, it is part of that uh, tradition of free speech. I think there are things that are provocative and that you don't say. And those, I think, should be focused on and stopped. But we have to be really careful that we don't end up with a with what Suella Braverman says is two-tier policing. I think what we've got is not two-tier policing, but inconsistent policing, where at one point, for example, with the Just Stop Oil, uh, Rowley does nothing, and the traffic stops, and we're all snarled up because people are gluing themselves to the road. <clears throat> and then, just a few days ago, 42... People are arrested for obstruction, exactly that issue. Well, why can't they have been arrested for obstruction in the summer or when this whole process started? The law and the interpretation of the law hasn't really changed, or rather the interpretation of the law does seem to have changed by the police, but it should be straightforward. It should be straightforward. And the problem, I think, lies in the fact that the the law may need to be clarified and the police may need to have a much clearer understanding of what laws they are enforcing and what are the limits of those laws, how they are to enforce them. But standing by and doing nothing when people are gluing themselves to the road and causing a major inconvenience, I think... Uh, the police themselves know there's something wrong. And that's the point at which, not, uh, which the Home Secretary shouldn't be uh, criticising the police. The Home Secretary should be uh, trying to see if there is something that needs amending or something that needs um, redrafting in the legislation that already exists. Or indeed, uh, if there's something which exists that hasn't been that has been overlooked and that's not the stuff for an article in the times that's the stuff for a private conversation and this is where this has fallen to pieces we should have robust policing in this country we should also have robust freedom to say things that other people may not like I may not agree with. Uh, but throughout this, we must be careful not to inflame hatred and not to uh, provoke violence. And that's, re and that's really it. I, 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 think, um, I think the Home Secretary uh, has acted appallingly throughout this. And notice today she is demonstrably silent, muted, muffled, hidden.